Good evening. Uh, my name is Dave Rosenstein, and welcome to CB8 Speaks. I'm a member of Community Board 8. Our guest tonight is the chair of Community Board 8. Uh, Nick Viest is beginning his third one-year term as Community Board Chair. Nick, welcome back to CB8 Speaks. It's good to be here, David. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a good opportunity yeah. to get an overview of what, what the board is doing. So Nick has been a member of CB8 since 1997 and an Upper East Side resident for 25 years. He and his wife, Georgiana, live in the district. Over the years, Nick has chaired or co-chaired several committees, including Street Life, Public Safety, and the Street Vendor Task Force. Nick's a seasoned sales executive with one of the nation's largest paper merchants, who still makes time for several public service commitments. Nick serves on the board of the Holy Trinity Neighborhood Center, which helps the homeless and needy in Yorkville. He's also an active member of the New York County Republican Party. Uh, Nick, you've served for some years as well as uh, president of the 19th Precinct Community Council, uh, given that public safety was a big issue in the recent mayoral election. Uh, why don't you tell the viewers what a precinct council is? Right. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between what is, what is called a community council, precinct community council, and our community board, which we're here really to discuss. The community council is an organization that's sanctioned by the NYPD, and that, that organization serves to foster relations between the police and the community. That's its basic purpose. It meets once a month, and it allows residents to come into a meeting, a regularly scheduled meeting. This one in the 19th Precinct happens to be on a Monday, first Monday of the month, and they can bring up any residents, can bring up any problem that is police-related, you know, that they have. These could be quality of life issues. It, it could be an issue where you, you see a, a restaurant uh, is using uh, bikes uh, that uh, are, are violating the law. It could be an issue where you've had uh, you feel that your block is unsafe or your building is unsafe. Uh, any, any type of police-related issue um, can, can be discussed at that meeting. So that's, that's a separate organization from the uh, community board, but it's a valuable one for the community because it does allow residents to, to directly address the commanding officer of the 19th Precinct, and hopefully you can get uh, something done uh, to solve the problem you might have. And it's an opportunity to get to know who the senior officers are in the precinct. Which, right. You're a Republican. You've been appointed to the community board and reappointed over the years by, I think, probably all Democrats. Uh, many people think that community boards are totally political entities, but there's a lot of diversity. And um, is this new? Is, is there more diversity in the in the in the community boards, uh, there was a time when we had board members going back 20 years plus who didn't show up, and they were reappointed over and over because of connections. Right. But that's changed. Yeah, no, it has changed. I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the political part of it. it. The community board is very unpolitical. It's not a, a political organization per se. It, it really, the, the, the biggest value that it has is that it is representative of the community. And so that's very important. And politics, per se, doesn't play a role in what we do because we're really dealing with local issues that are qual either quality of life or, or land use. You know, it's what you sort of call local, local government stuff. And uh, so, so the, the political side of it doesn't play a role and shouldn't play a role, to be honest. I was actually appointed by a Republican, but I've been reappointed by Democrats. And I think what they're looking for in, in any member of the community board is that they're active uh, in, in the board. That's really what they want to see. They want to see that, that the person that they've appointed takes the, takes the responsibility of, the, of what they do seriously, they attend the meetings, that they participate, and, and that they are a, a good reflection uh, on, 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 the, on the community that they represent. Getting also to the, the, the point about attendance, um, I, I think our attendance is a lot better these days than it used to be. Um, and I think that probably comes from the, from the top. It comes from, uh, I think, the, the, the borough president, the, the, the previous borough president, uh, Scott Stringer, I think, made a, made a real effort uh, to make sure that uh, members uh, were attending. That was one of the criteria that they used for reappointments. Uh, to, to look at that. 
And I'm sure that the, the new borough president, Gail Brewer, that's, that's an important criteria for her as, as well. I won't speak for her, but I think in general what we've seen is that uh, in the borough president's office, they want to make sure the people are showing up uh, uh, to the meetings. Yeah, you wrote an article for uh, Our Town. That's a weekly newspaper. Uh, some West Side viewers might know it as the, as the West Side Spirit. Um, and you talked about some of the issues that you saw as, as, as key issues that we're going to be facing over the coming year. And I, for those who didn't see it, maybe you could uh, give viewers an idea of some of the major issues that we're facing. So backing up a little bit, just for people who aren't familiar with Community Board 8, the boundaries are Park, Central Park to the East River, 96th Street to 59th Street, but it also includes Roosevelt Island. There are literally hundreds of issues that go through our community board. We are the lowest level of community government, and so that means that basically anything that happens within city or state government that sort of affects us runs through our board. And, and, and there are issues also that may not be ruled on by a state or city agency that also come in front of us. So, so we hear a myriad of different types of issues. Uh, in terms of what our board is going to be dealing with, I think quality of life issues always, uh, I think, present the largest uh, challenges and, are the, are the, and, and really the largest, we get the largest number of calls regarding those. Um, it's particularly on the east side, uh, you know, we see, I, we've seen more congestion in our area. Interestingly enough, the 2010 census, I, I believe it had our population coming down slightly, and I'm not sure where that came from. Um, it, I, I saw that in a story uh, the other day. Uh, I don't know if it was in the Times or one of the major papers, but I think they probably miscounted, to be honest, because anecdotally, what we're seeing is that the type of complaints that we're getting are related to more congestion, not less. So what, what does that mean? It, it means that, for example, um, senior citizens might have a more difficult time navigating the sidewalks. It means that we're going to see more deliveries uh, from restaurants. And so bikes uh, that uh, to deliver, uh, uh, you may see more violations there from them either uh, going the wrong way down the street or, or riding on the sidewalk. We get a ton of complaints about that. There are big issues involved. One of, one of the, one of the I call, what I call the 800-pound gorilla issue in our community is the Second Avenue subway. Mm -hmm. that, it, that issue is by far the largest in terms of its impact. There hasn't been a project like this in I don't know how many years. We, we haven't done something. This is a major, major construction project. In my view, I don't think it's something that can be mitigated because the impact is so large. And, and so what our role is really to try to find ways to help people. But it doesn't mean we can mitigate it because it's such a huge impact. If you have a business where, you know, the entrance of your bu business is basically blocked uh, by the construction going on, that's a major, there's no, way, there's no way to sort of get around that if you're a business. So, so you have to try to deal with it best you can. We, we have asked for help from the state or city government in the form of loans or things like that. Um, but it's, it's been difficult to get that, that kind of assistance for various reasons. But we're ve I'm very cognizant, I think the board is very cognizant of the impact that that project has on people's lives. Not just businesses, but also residents. Think about the quality of life that someone has every day they get out of their apartment and there's construction going on. There's noise, there's dust, there's all types of issues that are related to that. That's, that's not to sit here and say we complain about it every single day and it's a terrible project. It's one of these projects that when it's done, it's going to serve a tremendous number of residents and ease the congestion on the Lexington Avenue line, which is a big problem. So it, it has a benefit down the line, but in the near term, it's a substantial impact and a burden for the people who are having to deal with it now. So one of the things I mentioned in the article, that's clearly something we have to keep working on to try to find ways to at least help people with that and, and work with the elected officials to see if there's some other creative ideas that they have uh, to, to, help, to help these residents. The other types of issues, bike lanes have been put in on First Avenue. Um, and so we're going to be dealing with that. There's gonna be uh, different proposals for the city bike uh, service that we're seeing around the city. The, the city would like to expand that program, so we're going to be seeing, we're going to be hearing issues on that. 
Um, so, so our transportation committee, for example, is, is going to be dealing with a lot of those issues. We encourage people to come in and voice their op opinions about it. But, but those, those types of issues we're going to be seeing a, a lot of. Um, the other big issue that's going on in the, on, the, on the east side, on the east part of the east side, is on York Avenue, there are three hospitals and a research hospital, or research facility, I should call it, that are, are putting up major construction. These are going to be major projects. Uh, and so there are significant traffic impacts on York Avenue that we're, we're going to be experiencing, that the residents are going to be experiencing. So, so we have asked for a traffic study of York Avenue, um, uh, we sh and we will be getting it. There is some time that it's going to take to get that. We feel it's very important. But there's no question that there's going to be a major traffic impact uh, on York Avenue and also an a, a construction impact on the residents who, who are in that area. It's something we need to, to, to do in terms of making sure that we give those residents the ability to voice any concern that they have about that construction uh, to the right people within city government, to the hospitals that are doing the construction, and to make sure we can get results quickly to deal with anything that comes up as a result of it. At the other end of York Avenue, at the north end, if that marine transfer station goes through, we're going to have the same traffic issues they had 30 years ago when there was a garbage facility there, right. trucks lined up. Yeah, and, and officially our position is that we are opposed to the, to the tr what's called the marine transfer station. We don't believe the site is appropriate. It will have, it, there will be impacts. Also, again, it's on York Avenue. So the, a lot of the, uh, the, the uh, trucks, the, uh, if you call them garbage trucks, that are going to be delivering uh, picking up garbage and delivering it into the station are going to be coming along either York or the side streets that mm -hmm. feed into York. The station is in a tricky proximity to our area because it's virtually entrance is on York Avenue. So those trucks have to feed right from York into the entrance of that transfer station. So that's the difficulty there, and, and there's going to be impacts there. We're also, I'm also concerned about the environmental impact of, of, of running that many trucks through our area, and certainly we're going to be um, dealing with that um, in, in the next week. Uh, there'll be a, an appointment of new uh, uh, environmental and sanitation co-chairs. One of the things that I'm going to be asking them to look into is the environmental impact of what's going on on, on York Avenue, especially as it relates to the transportation, but also as it relates to everything else that's going on there. Some people have expressed concern that uh, York Avenue might end up being one way, which would change the neighborhood feeling of it. When you talk about a traffic study that's being done on York, people get concerned. And, and I don't recall if this was brought up a, as an issue before. It might have been, and that's why people uh, have those concerns. But the community board has no position on that whatsoever. And, and I haven't heard anything uh, about that, and we're not... We're not uh, pushing that in any way, shape, or form, but what we are asking for is for traffic to be studied because we know that there will be traffic impacts on York Avenue. And there are particular intersections that are, in, in, in some of the environmental um, impact statements, have already been deemed as not being able to be mitigated, non-mitigatable, okay? So what does that mean? It means that there are some things that can be done to help the situation but more steps have to be taken in order to solve some of those traffic uh, problems that can, will, will crop up uh, as a result of the construction that's going on. Now, open space was another item that you Yeah, open about space is a, is a big issue for our community board. Interestingly enough, most people wouldn't think that the east side is a problem with open space on the face of it because you think, okay, great, you have, you're, you've got Central Park to your west and you have a river on your on, on the east part of the district, what, why should you be you know, concerned about open space? But, the, but the, actually the, the truth is, we, and we had a study that was done, our Parks Committee did a very fine job in, in putting together a forum regarding this issue. We found out that once you get three blocks or four blocks east of Fifth Avenue, you have very little open space in most of the district. So there aren't, there aren't sufficient green areas, there aren't sufficient parks, uh, it, it is an issue for Eastsiders, and, and what's happened is because I think you've gotten more construction, more residential units have been built, there's more people out there looking for somewhere to go, uh, like a park or something like that. So it clearly is an issue in, in our community, uh, and the Parks Committee is, is looking at creative ways that we can deal with this. The, and, and, and there are, you know, I think there are smaller things that can be done that are creative, looking at, say, a current space, 
where maybe that could be redesigned or reshaped to make it more green. Then in the larger part of it, clearly there is, on the east part of the district, there is the esplanade, which we really would like to see more uh, fully developed and made into a rec recreational type of a, we're going to call it a recreational park, but really something that where people can have multi-uses, where they can walk there, sit there, if they want to ride a bike, they can do that, but make it a, a pleasant uh, enjoyable experience, like a park-like experience uh, for them to enjoy, and we, we don't have that now. Right, from the uh, bottom of Carl Shores Park, or the, the brief elevated section that runs from 84th to 81st Street, once you drop down to the river level, it's, it's just a worn-out piece of sidewalk with some scraggly green and um, uh, a lot of puddles, a lot of, a lot of uh, mechanical flaws that need to be repaired. Right, I mean, structurally, there's, uh, there's issues, there's, there, there's structure, there's problems with some of the, the piers that hold up, some of the esplanade, but I think the other part of it is, too, if you go to the west side and you see what's been done on the west side, they've really made a, a, a beautiful park there that people can enjoy, and I think that's really what we're trying to get to, is to, to be, and to be able to extend that all the way up the river. And this goes into the community board north of us and south of us. We really want something that people can go to and enjoy because you have this space uh, with this potential, which is on the water, which it, it makes all the sense to be able to do that. And, make every, and it makes everyone's lives a little bit better, a little more enjoyable. And that's really where we want to get to. But, David, you're absolutely right. But when you get below call shirts, you've got some areas which... Uh, really need to be fixed, uh, and, and, and what we're asking for is really a master plan to give us uh, really a, a, a larger plan to incorporate that whole area along our uh, district lines, uh, and, and then also what we'll need to do is to find funding uh, in order to uh, carry out those plans. It's also important to note that on, when you get uh, toward the south part of our district, there are a lot of hospitals uh, that, that take up space in that area, and so our, our ability to use it has been limited because of those uses. Uh, th this is a, a product of what development has gone on over time. We understand that, but we really want to maximize uh, something that we think is a, is a resource for our community. I don't want to skip over 86th Street because that's the, the central business core of our right. community, and it's... Um, some sections of it are pretty ragged. And that's one of the other things that I mentioned in, in the article that I wrote for Our Town, is that, that that area is an area, it really needs to be an area of focus. Um, and because it's, it's really a primary hub of the Upper East Side in terms of transportation, it's a main express stop for the Lexington Avenue line. You have major businesses that are there now. And there's a tremendous amount of pedestrian foot traffic that goes through there. And so when you have that type of environment, you have a number of issues that come into play. For example, it's prime area for street vendors to go in and sell their wares. Where you have a lot of pedestrian traffic, you have street vendors who want to capitalize on that. That's how that works. So we've, we have a special uh, street vendor task force that's been trying to deal with those issues. It's, 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 an, it's dealing with issues that are broader than 86th Street, but it's also focused on the problems we have there. The police actually do have um, enforcement squads, but they're dedicated to Midtown. That there's a Midtown enforcement squad that, that handles. So when you go down into Midtown, you'll notice that you don't have as, as much of that issue in certain areas. They still have problems with it, and there's still many complaints, especially, in, for example, on 34th Street. They run into problems there. There are a number of problems in the city where it's an issue. 86th Street, we, we have an issue there. We, we, we re, we're trying to get more work done on how we can make sure that it's a navigatable street for anybody who wants to go through there. The other thing is that, quite honestly, it's not clean. It, and it's, it, uh, 86th Street, the, the situation there has gotten worse. And one of the, one of the problems is that some of the, the local groups that help clean up on the Upper East Side uh, are you know, saying that they don't have the ability to do it and they need more funding in order to do that. But we need to figure out a way to keep it clean. Uh, w there are steps, I think, that can be taken, but one of the things I'm going to look at is you know, how we address that. Because really, uh, it, it, that kind of a place can get dirty very quickly, and it's unsanitary, and it isn't, it isn't right, and it, and it really becomes a bad reflection on that 
part of the street, and we don't want to see it get that way. It's a little bit of inside baseball, but I wanted to ask you about uh, some of the, uh, the obstacles that have been coming up to, that affect our ability to have our meetings. In particular, uh, as this recession has gone on and on, uh, institutions that have been giving us auditorium space have begun to say, well, we can't afford to keep staff on past a certain hour. We have to pay them overtime charges. You've got to end your meeting before you've really had time to finish your business. Or we can't use our space at all. Or uh, we have a fee that we're going to be applying, which will have to come out of our budget, which is already restricted. Uh, how big a concern is this? Well, it's a concern and it's a practical problem for us. It's a problem we have every time we're trying to set up meetings for the larger group of the community board. We hold two what we call full board meetings a month, which uh, uh, normally 40 to 50 people uh, are going to be attending that meeting. That's uh, just the board members. And that, that's the board members. So then you have members of the public um, who, who are in, and you might have as many as 100, or in some cases we've had 200 people uh, inside, a, inside a room. So we need large spaces that can accommodate that. And also those meetings can go late. They can go past 10 o'clock at night. So one of the problems I think that's going on is that there are some institutions that are getting more, f more funding or more contributions, and there are others that are not. And as their costs go up, the, the ones that are not getting sufficient funding or contributions, uh, they're under the gun. And so what they need to, in, in order to provide a space, they have to have staff there that can, that can be there and that they'll have to pay overtime to in order to, uh, uh, you know, accommodate us. And that's the challenge, really. I'm not pointing a finger at anyone here. I am saying it's, it is a problem for us. We're actively looking for spaces. Certainly, if anyone's out there that has them, we're, we're open to it. Please contact the community board office. But this is a challenge going forward, and I think it's very important for the community to understand that these meetings are important because government work is getting done there, government work that affects us at the most local level. And so if, if we don't have those spaces, uh, we can't do the job we need to do. So this is quite, a, quite an important. I'm glad you raised that issue, David. And for those who have never attended a community board meeting, every full board meeting begins with a public session where anybody can speak for two minutes. Right. Or right. And, three and, if it's And that's a, uh, that's a good available. point also. But I think what one of the most val valuable things that the community board does is it provides the public with the ability to air out an issue and to hear it discussed and also for them to, to pass on their views to other people in city government, not just us, but the city councilman, the borough president, and the mayor. That This is part of a record, and this gets passed up the line. It's a very important part of the, it's the start of the process and a very important part of the process. All our, by the way, all of our meetings can be filmed. They can also, they're open to the public. Everything we do uh, can be viewed by the public. Yeah, it's really the town hall. Right. It, it's a small town. Well, our population of Community Board 8, when I looked it up, was 220,000. It's not such a small town. Yeah, I say quarter of a million, but you're right. It's probably closer to 220. Yeah. I think your number is more accurate. Yeah. But that isn't such a small town. In a lot no. of places, that's a small city. And certainly feels like that. If you're on the east side, it, it really almost feels like a, it feels like a small city, uh, you know, with, with, within our area. So, and, there's, and, and that's the interesting thing is that a lot of issues come up, not simply because you have 220,000 people living there, but because of the proximity that we live, well, we live on top of each other. So if you look at the space that we have to work within, issues are going to come up. You're going to be bumping into basically into your neighbor a lot more than you would if you were spread out. If you had a different type of a community where you had more area, you, you might have different issues. But because of that congestion, it creates a whole host of other problems that, that have to be dealt with. Uh, and, and the community board really is one of our roles is to work through some of those things. For anybody who has not attended a community board meeting and is watching this show, our website, which is CB8, that's like Community Board 8, the numeral 8, M from Manhattan.com, CB8M.com. Uh, when you go to that site, you see a calendar. The calendar has the, the events, the committee meetings or the full board meeting on each, on each of the um, 
the days when those meetings take place. If you click on it, it will give you the agenda, the location. Uh, those are all open to the public. Committee meetings sometimes are small roundtable meetings. Sometimes they're a couple hundred people. It depends on the, the issue, and, uh, but it's a good opportunity to get involved. And incidentally, there's also a form that you can fill out if you're interested in applying to become a community board member. This is the time to do it because April 1st is when new board members are appointed, people whose terms are finished and are not being reappointed or choose not to be uh, seek reappointment, open up seats. Um, Check our website or the Manhattan Borough President's website. Just Google Manhattan Borough President and you'll find that site. Notice, public notice. Uh, people sometimes complain. They come to a meeting. There's a, a project going up down the street from them. They say, I didn't know anything about this. Why didn't anybody tell me? Right. We do a lot of outreach. We don't have a budget to buy uh, advertisements in newspapers, but we send out emails to thousands of people. Uh, the media carries our town, the local weekly newspaper carries notices. Um, we post aggressively. Right. And what you said is right. The, the difficulty for us is we don't, we're not, we're not a city agency that has a budget where we can afford, we have a small budget, but that's to maintain staff, basically. The, re the rest of the money, there isn't money there for us to go out and do significant outreach through different mediums. However, we can, we do post whenever we can, and that's just putting something on a, on a lamppost. Um, the other thing that we do is send email blasts. We gather in email addresses from people uh, who, who want to be on our email list. They can opt out. When they come to a meeting, they sign a sheet, put their email address. They, ca they can opt out if they want, say they don't wish it to be listed. But if you come and put it on there, we'll, we'll, we put it on our list, and then we blast uh, the information of those meetings to that to that email list. Uh, we we uh, we have a website. All our meetings are are on that website. Uh, but one of my challenges is really to try to get the word out, and we have to keep working hard in in order to do that. Um, one thing we'll probably look at is to try to post, or at least have meetings on the website. At least list what committees are meeting when, farther out in time. So it doesn't have to have the specific agenda, but at least say full board is going to be on this date, land use is going to be on this date, so and transportation meets on this date. So at least people can know these are when the committees are meeting out into time, and then we can add the agenda later. So I'm that's glad something you we can that. look at. Somebody came up to me at the last board meeting and said that why can't we put what we do know? Yeah, that's a good idea. We're open to whatever ideas people come in with to help us with that with that issue. Well, I think we're pretty much. Uh out of time. Thanks, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.